and we found a technology where we can monitor certain uh, parameters in uh, air quality in stables, but also combine it with video images of the pigs in the in in the view of the of the camera. Uh, it's not all the pigs in the stable, but we can see a fair amount of what's going on in the stable mm -hmm. by analyzing the images and the data uh, regarding the climate, we can really draw conclusions. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me for this week's episode is Tim Von Sprong, Tim is a swine veterinarian with AgriFirm based out of the Netherlands. Now, you've tackled an intriguing case in a sow herd using a monitoring system, and you were able to reduce the return to estrus rate from 22% to 10%. Before you explain to us how you achieved this pretty impressive uh, result, why don't you take a moment, Tim, and introduce yourself to the audience? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, all the way from the Netherlands on, on your podcast. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Tim van Sprang. Uh, as you said, I'm a swine veterinarian for like 10 years now. As a small boy, I started working on a on a pig farm in the Netherlands. And then when I finish, finished uh, school, I went working as a swine veterinarian and that's for 10 years now. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure, light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at healthyclimatemonitor.com. Excellent. Well, uh, we have similar backgrounds. I similarly started working on farms. Um, and I know that the, you're here today to talk to us about some on-farm application. You've been doing some pretty interesting stuff as it relates to monitoring behavior and air quality and ultimately trying to improve farm performance through those monitoring efforts. So, yes. Tim, without further ado, tell us what you've been working on. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, Maybe I should take you all back to the to the problem why we started using this technology because we always found in discussing climate in big barns that we were um, facing the problem that we were only there on a specific moment in time and that the measurements we did on that specific moment didn't really relate to uh, the climate in the barn five minutes later or five minutes earlier, let alone in the middle of the night or early morning. Yeah. So we tried to get to farms in the early morning on the difficult hours of, for climate changes, on bad weather conditions and that sort of things, but it's just not practical. So we started looking around for ways to assess climate in combination with production and, and how to improve uh, farm uh, farm climate and improve production results with video images of the pigs in the in in the view of the of the camera uh, it's not all the pigs in the stable but we can see a fair amount of what's going on in the stable mm -hmm. by analyzing the images and the data uh, regarding the climate we can really draw conclusions and also because we can see things and in that way we can correlate abnormalities we see in the data and we can check them right away with what's happening on the on the well it's video imaging what's happening what 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 can we see and in that way we don't have to analyze six weeks every minute but we can jump to the to the yeah, to the abnormalities we see where the abnormalities get highlighted, and then we can investigate those. Tim, when you say analyze the the images or the video, is that something you're doing as a consultant to the farm, or is there built-in technology within the video that analyzes it for you and gives you some sort of report to, to read or look at? Um, it's it's both. Um, the The device comes with an app that's getting more and more sophisticated. So there is uh, a lot of um, 
on the on one side where the uh, technology gives you heads up, look at this, look at that, and then on the other side, it makes you very makes it very easy to mark certain areas in in the recording um, and compare it with other data at the same time point. But we also learned in using the technology that a lot of quality for the farmer, so added value comes through using it a lot. What type of pig farms do you find that this is uh, most valuable in so far, Tim? You know, we've got the breeder herds, the grow finish pigs, boar studs, any particular type of farms where you found the most value? Yes, um, we, we found it most valuable on areas where there is um, less oversight, so uh, where, where the, the farmer comes uh, not that often. Um, and on the, 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 how do you call it, the, um, the, the, the problem uh, animal groups. So uh, 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 freshly born piglets, um, a fairing unit, uh, freshly weaned piglets, um, those are the problematic areas. Um, if we go to fattening pigs, we have some spectacular investigations, but most of the time, I would say, we would have gotten the same results by thoroughly checking the climate system in the barn, checking all the, uh, the, 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 the temperatures and everything, and just going through it with a fine uh, comb, you call it in England. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. we, would have, we would have gotten the same results. Maybe this techni technology makes it a little bit easier, but it wouldn't have been impossible to do. But for the, for the small animals, uh, for, the, for the delicate uh, age groups, it's a really big plus in our uh, on-farm consultancy, I think. You mentioned the ability to monitor at night, and I think that's certainly valuable because we're not there. You know, if we're talking about the climate conditions in the barn at night, we don't know is oftentimes the answer. Or we have to dig through the controller to find it. You got any good examples, Tim, of where, you know, you've been able to use that night monitoring to help influence a decision and maybe make a better decision than what you would have made without that information? Well, it's it's. I don't know if we would have made a better decision. I have a good example of it, but it was an error we fixed with it. So it's uh, the error shouldn't have been there, but it was a, a sow farm with a group housing for the sows mm -hmm. and there was too much unrest. It was just uh, um, uh, the, the sows weren't, uh, uh, they were restless. They were walking around too much and um, Return to estrus was way up, uh, absolutely not unacceptable. Everything was checked. Climate was checked. Feed was checked. Health was checked. Everything was done. And we just couldn't improve in that area. And then we used this, uh, this device to check climate and, and video uh, feed. And pretty quickly, we found out that there were some very erratic uh, patterns in the movement of the sows during the night. So we saw certain moments where all the sows got up and walked around in the stable in the middle of the night. They shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. And when we further analyzed, we saw that also during daytime, when they were lying down, they weren't calm. They weren't lying down like a pig in rest. They were not on their feet, but they were making sure that they can, could get up very quickly. Yeah. So, and then we started analyzing the climate data on those moments where we saw the sows walking around a lot. And there were some very steep drops in temperature and also in CO2 levels. And that means something with the ventilation is going wrong or different or anything, but we wouldn't, would, would not ever have found it because there was in the ventilation computer on those time points, there was a correction on a certain outside temperature correction. So when it dropped outside under a certain temperature, instead of adjusting the ventilation a little bit, it opened the valves completely and there was a massive influx of cold outside air. And then inside air temperature dropped a lot. So then the valves uh, closed again. 
So those times only it took only five minutes for uh, for the valves to close again. But mm-hmm. in those five minutes, the sows were completely uncomfortable and started walking around looking for a warm spot in the stable. And also the unpredictability of this cold air mm-hmm. made them stressed through the entire day. And also by eradicating this um, error in the ventilation system, we saw that the return to estrus went up uh, from, uh, yeah, I will have to rephrase it all the way around. We had a 20, 22% and it went down to 10%, just normal Dutch values mm-hmm. from uh, with one, one, one month after we fixed the problem. Yep. Down to only 10% of the sows not coming back into heat. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really genuinely convinced that we would have looked for years more to find this problem. I think it would have taken an error in the feed, uh, feed unit or something for somebody to be there in the middle of the night to notice this, because otherwise we would never have found it. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, uh, uh, Tim, I'm oversimplifying, but this is a tool you can use to help find what is the problem with your performance metrics, right? Whether it's wean to service interval or pre wean mortality, um, helping you find the root cause of something that's happening while you're not in the barn because these cameras, these sensors are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we're only in there for a limited amount of time. Is that a fair way to summarize it? Yes, and and I think the the strength of this technology is the also the um, the ability to combine different data. Because in this particular case I just discussed, if we would have only had the video image, we would still have to gone into that barn an entire night to find out the problem. But because we saw also the massive increase decrease in temperature and CO two levels we were pretty easy to put, pin out where the pinpoint, where the error was. Yep. So the combination of different measurements really Im- makes it easier to, to get to the right conclusion. Very good. Tim, it's very interesting stuff. I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all that with our audience. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Well, thanks for being on the show and to our audience. Thank you very much for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on next week's episode. For Tim Von Sprong, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.